I began the journey into astronomy and astrophotography when I was a little child and, by dint of a great deal of begging my parents, saving my allowance, and every last bit of pocket money that I earned by doing jobs for the farms and homesteads in the area, I was able to put together enough money to get my first telescope and jerry-rigged a way to connect my old X-15 camera to it, which turned out to be pointless, but hey, I was just a little kid at the time. I've learned an awful lot since then, like with the advent of the digital age, how to braid the various cables together that run the guiding and main camera, the main camera's fan, and the autofocuser and dew heaters to create good cable management, much the same way that my wife braids her long hair to keep it out of her face when she works in the garden. I've picked up a few other tricks too, like since we live back in the sticks and have a 200 meter long non-paved driveway, it comes in handy just to use some concrete plates on the ground to help keep the tripod level. And since, on a clear night, setting up the telescope, its tripod and mount means carrying everything from the cottage almost 100 meters away to where I like to use it, I've developed some ways to make the whole process more efficient, like using industrial strength Velcro to secure in place all the power supplies inside of an ammo box, which allows me to bring them out, set them up in a moment, and leave them covered overnight to protect them from dew and the chance of a rain. But with the growth of the Sky Story channel, it's time for me to consider actually building that observatory that I've had a mind to do for a couple of years. And that begins with a trip from my beloved Backwoods homestead to the village about an hour away to get concrete, rebar, and the other oddments used to begin the first steps of an observatory, building a pier. I love Backwoods living. It's a lifestyle I've experienced all my life with the exception of the dozen years I spent in universities, studying psychology, earth sciences, and life sciences. Not only is it great to live in the midst of the woods with all their wildlife, but the skies overhead are just amazing on a clear dark night. Now, living on a large homestead, I have a pretty good sized truck, but it's a half ton pickup truck, meaning it's only really rated to carry about a half ton of cargo. I'm not going to risk pushing it beyond that. So that means two trips to the village and back to get all the concrete because I'm going to need over 20 bags of concrete, and those bags are 30 kilos each, or 66 pounds. In the end, since the village is an hour away, and a trip back and forth with a stop at the hardware store amounts to about three hours, I got extra and picked up 28 bags of concrete. And that's just about a ton of concrete. But with everything finally back at the homestead, in place and ready to begin, last weekend, I began the official start on that longtime dream building an observatory. And that began with digging a hole to put in place a pier to hold the mount, telescope, and its associated equipment. It was a lot of work. I live in a hollow at the top of a mountain. In places, the soil is only inches deep, and digging this 66 centimeter diameter hole meant breaking up a lot of rocks and getting them out, a task that got harder and harder as the hole got deeper and deeper. I've always found it to be a somehow profound irony that building an observatory to study the stars begins with looking down and digging a deep hole. My wife and I set to work on the project about daybreak, and we didn't finish till well after 7 p.m. But at least throughout the entire endeavor, we were surrounded by the lovely sounds of nature, the brook and bird song, and the curious chattering of squirrels. But it was a hot day and the black flies and deer flies loved it. Still, to keep ourselves motivated, we just looked up into that gorgeous sky overhead and imagined the night to come that the observatory would set about its work. When the hole was ready, we filled it with over 12 sacks of concrete. And when that was done and the base was ready, my wife Daphne had the brilliant idea to set an old tool stand over the hole and then set the sono tube down between the tool stand to make direct contact with the wet concrete at the ground. Then, using the old tool stand as a brace, we were able to take eight two by fours and clamp them with woodworker's grips to the stand. This allowed me to level the pier with great precision. And I think I was able to get it to within an eighth of a degree of perfect plumb being able to simply unclamp the 2x4s, make tiny adjustments and reclamp them certainly helped with that process. When that was in place, I set the pier adapter on top, let the concrete harden, then removed the pier adapter and painted the zinc plated bolts and washers with trim clad rust paint. I took the nuts that locked the pier adapter into place, filled the centers with wax and painted the outside also with the trim clad rust paint. Now, both the concrete of the pier and the rust paints are finishing their curing and should be ready to use within a few days. 
Now we just need some cooperative weather so that we can give the new pier a trial run. There's still a lot of work to do, and this is just the first step in building the observatory. Over the next few months I'm going to set up pressure treated fence posts to work as mini power lines to hold extension cord and Wi-Fi expanders high and dry off the ground. Eventually we'll replace the extension cord with a solar power system. At about the same time we'll start building a 3 meter by 3 meter deck around the pier. The deck is what the micro observatory will go on. We can't build directly flush to the ground here. Over the course of the winter we could get anywhere between half a meter and two meters of snow. And it's not the snow though that concerns me, it's the runoff during the spring. Build something flush to the ground and the equipment will be in a lake. The top of the deck will be 35 centimeters over the ground, well above any spring runoff. And since we're on top of a mountain, we can't really flood. From here, all the water goes downhill. It's just a matter of keeping all the equipment high and dry while the spring runoff happens. But that's the first step and the observatory is well underway. Perhaps I'm being ambitious, but I hope to have the majority of the work completed by the end of September. Either way, with the pier up, we can leave the mount and the telescope on it pretty much all the time, just covering them with a the telegizmo cover till the rest of the observatory is done, which will make shooting a lot more convenient and allow us to take advantage of those many nights where there's only going to be a couple hours free of clouds. And to me, that's what the observatory is all about, being able to take advantage of every moment of every clear night. We'll keep you updated on the observatory project. Until next time, get out there and shoot the sky.